You are listening and watching to a very special podcast. Here we got more on Lola, but I decided to put a little spin on things. You're gonna love this, peeps. Enjoy. Raina Hurst. She used to be known as Fiora. Part of her own show when she was a child star. Well, <clears throat> child star growing into her teens. Just the wide-eyed amazing. However, that was all just a big lie. A big scam. Reyna was nothing more than just a girl who was forced into showbiz just because her stupid mother who was once a star herself, but now she's become more of a business manager. But Reyna's mother is no exception. She's nothing but a spoiled, selfish, heartless woman. The only thing that Reyna managed to do was remain a cold heart. She was so annoyed with all the fans and the paparazzi Luckily, she managed to change all that when she did her talk show. And Raina Hurst was nothing more than a little bit of a bitch. At least that's what people said. But Raina, well, underneath it all, she's trying to make herself look like a bitch so everyone can leave her alone. She never asked to be Fiora. However, there was one person that managed to defrost her cold heart a bit. And that was her best friend, Justine Magnus. After Justine lost her parents, she was adopted by Reyna and her mother. However, Reyna had to deal with her mother, who was nothing more than an abusive, smothering parent. And also a selfish woman. One day, Reyna's mother tried to force Reyna to purge herself after eating food. Justine saw this and managed to stop Mrs. Hurst and using her own strength and powers. So, Mrs. Hurst managed to leave Reyna alone, fearing that Justine would intervene. Reyna was shocked about Justine's bravery and toughness and the two of them became quite good friends. Rena was the only one to warm up to Justine. At first, she never really liked Justine because she was nothing more than an orphan and also someone who had been in a coma. Someone who had the lucky life and she didn't. But she could see Justine wouldn't let anyone put themselves in harm's way. Reyna was so thankful to have Justine, but Justine always shrugs as if it was nothing and said, hey, you would do the same thing for me, wouldn't you? That's something that Reyna agreed. Despite her bitchiness, Reyna was kind and she had a soft spot for abused children and also the troubled teenagers, the ones that were considered emo. She pretty much had sympathy towards them. However, despite herself, despite her image of being formerly known as Fiora, Reyna was a girl who had a bit of reddish, brown hair and she used to have short hair but she let it grow out making it long people would nickname her the hellcat of dwc but she didn't mind anyone who calls her hellcat she just smiles and says i'll take that as a compliment any day which she would laugh to herself How come she is mentioned upon this? Well, 
She pretty much ran into Lola and the rest of the squad one day. Reyna was attending some sort of public meeting hosted by someone of a politician. During that time, there seemed to be an eruption. The type two infestations attacked and tried to kill the politician. Everyone shrieked. Reyna couldn't move. She was scared out of her wits. She tried to flee, but one of the infestations pinned her to the ground. And then the monster growled in her face and some sort of saliva dripped from its teeth. But not just saliva, blood. Reyna knew that Justine wasn't going to come to save her. I'm going to die. I'm seriously going to die, she thought to herself. She closed her eyes and braced for impact, but she didn't feel the sting of claws into her. She didn't feel something ripping at her throat. She realized this and wondered what was happening. When she opened her eyes, there was Lola using her telekinetic force to stop the creature. Rena gasped at the sight. The monsters were being apprehended by Shuhei Hasagi, Izuru, also Jean Kirstein, Elfman, Mira, and of course, Lasana. This shocked her. Reyna couldn't believe it. No way, she muttered to herself. Lola just smiled at Reyna and just pushed the monster back. Lola called out, Come on, guys, let's go. Everyone was shocked by this, even Reyna. Just then, someone came approach to her. My, you're quite lucky, dear Reyna. <laughs> That is one of the agents of Evermore. You should be blessed. Agent of Evermore? She said, yes, the agents of Evermore. That one is Dolores Nikita, but everyone calls her Lola. Lola? <laughs> that sounds like a bit of a spitzy name now, isn't it? Sounds girly, Reyna said bitterly. But soon she was curious. The thing was, Reyna, former child star, was not just a talk show host, but she was also a bit of a detective on her. I guess it was all because of Justine who helped her out. Ever since Reyna moved out from her mom's place, she's been doing pretty good on her own, but she was a bit investigating on this case. The footage was reeled out. Reyna and her team were looking over at the footage of Lola and the others taking on the monsters. The chief had to say, what are these people? However, some of them were trying to conclude that they could be part of some sort of conspiracy with the monsters. However, Reyna didn't say anything, she just stared. So she walked closer as the chief began ranting and ranting. Reyna looked over at the scar-faced Shuhei, and she smiled, saying, Huh, nice muscles, buddy, she muttered. Did you say something, Reyna? Yeah, he's got a bit of strength, this one. I don't know, but I've been hearing a lot about him. Another said, Yes, that's Shuhei Hisagi. Part of Squad 9 of the Soul Society. I'm still surprised that they still have someone like that. Isn't it strange? Shuhei? It's a Japanese name, Reina. I guess you might have heard them a lot. But not just Japanese names. They got names just like the rest of us. Reina sat back down, but she leaned in her chair. So what do you want us to do? Investigate on this? 
Whatever the cause. Put it on the front page. <laughs> Cash money to have an interview with Lola and her posse. If these guys really are who they say they are, of the agents of Evermore, then I'm gonna make sure they are forever more, the chief said. It sounded a little cheesy, but hey, it was a done deal. Reyna didn't care about the money, but she did want to get a little close to comfort. So she decided to maybe try to get them for an interview. At the next day, Lola was looking over at the paper. She couldn't help but grin. Oh, so somebody is going to get paid to have an interview with me and all of you people. Well, isn't this something? Jean looked at her in disbelief. You're kidding, he said. No, it says so right here. <laughs> I'm surprised you and your world doesn't have any newspapers. Oh, we just get them from the boards. Cash money? A thousand dollars? You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Jean said, placing the paper down. He crossed his arms a bit. What are they trying to do? Trying to make a million off us? Who knows? Maybe we can get someone to be a lucky person to know who we are. <sighs> However, Elfman said, That doesn't sound like something of a man would do. I don't know if I should trust in this, Elfman said. But Mira pointed out, Still, it wouldn't be bad for people to get to know us. I don't want them to think we're like, you know, like Glass Coffin. Yeah, that's actually true, Lasano said. I mean, <laughs> who's to say that we're going to be the ones to <laughs> having to deal with someone like that, huh? Lola then nodded. That's true. I believe you guys have a point. Maybe it wouldn't be bad for people to get to know us. There isn't a lot to tell about the agents of Evermore now, isn't there? I think we should give them what they want. Now can we? Lola said with a smirk on her face. It seems she had some sort of determination. Well, that's it for now, but don't worry. We have more coming your way. I'm Catherine Donovan, and I'll catch you later.